Hey everyone, in today's lesson we will talk about pixel type effects. So, um, here I prepared a few of them, um, and starting from the very beginning we'll do uh, something a little bit complex. So, uh, let me show you actually what we will achieve in the end. So, here we have um, a liquid uh, a pixel a liquid effect okay just play uh, and the second one is the fire effect We'll use uh, our uh, uh, pyros uh, and we'll transfer attributes onto our points, which then uh, will apply not only the movement but also uh, the color as well. Okay, so uh, let's start with the basics. Uh, so here I have a rubber toy, and I think it, con it consists um, uh, of a few primitives. So I decided to convert it to uh, to VDB uh, volume and then back to geometry. Okay, and here's my geometry. So uh, there's a um, there's a few uh, uh, type of uh, pixel effect you might want to uh, see in your project. The first one, whenever your pixels are uh, constantly changing, and the second one, when when your uh, pixel uh, pixels are um, uh, are static I mean they're not changing so you have a constant shape without any movement uh, happening uh, onto the pixels itself so here I have uh, applied a few expressions to my uh, geometry and I'm having uh, the type of um, procedural animation and I'm using the time expression uh, multiplied by certain value okay and next what I'm doing I'm adding a bounding box um, which covers all the geometry and I'm adding um, points from vol volume okay um, then I'm adding a p-scale uh, to add some scale attribute to my uh, points okay and here I'm using a, a small expression which I saved into my uh, preset library, which uh, uh, I will share soon. Um, I often I oftenly use it. Uh, there's some he helpful expressions that uh, might be also useful uh, to you. So uh, next, I'm using the the main geometry as the point. Uh, selector and then I'm deleting it and also I could uh, uh, simply link uh, my p-scale value um, I think I better do it here okay go around, around. this way I may change uh, my resolution and my scale will also uh, will change accordingly okay so here I'm uh, deleting the group of selected uh, points but uh, I'm deleting non-selected uh, points this way I'm keeping um, all the points inside the rubber toy okay and then I'm copying points onto my geometry and this way I'm having this type of animation. If you uh, 
and if um, and you see the points are constantly changing okay there might be neat effect if you probably seen the uh, pixels movie um, there is also uh, some movement in some of the characters but some uh, but some of the characters or some parts of the characters are have a constant type of pixels okay and uh, uh, if for example I decide to uh, to add some resolution you see uh, the p scale uh, changes accordingly which is uh, very useful Uh, we will also actually um, um, do a tutorial on the uh, pixels movie how they made uh, those uh, pixel characters with uh, uh, some color changes uh, onto the uh, those pixels okay uh, so uh, and for example, I need a static count. I will all I will I will do my animation afterwards, right? And here I have a constant number of uh, pixels. <laughs> I made a project a few times back and. Um, uh, there was a, a character and uh, the client uh, asked me to keep uh, a constant uh, pixel count on its body but uh, on the arms and uh, legs uh, they would constantly change and uh, it, it was a kind of a nice effect to it okay um, the second thing is where we would like to see what so we have uh, we have here a circle and I'm adjusting normals so you see I'm using a normal as a as a tangent and uh, I'm using the first edge so I'm having those normals um, follow the curve okay then I add a curve attribute a uh, curve node and I animated the curve with the extracting so I have a single point running along the curve and here I am also adding uh, I simply inverted my uh, character to face it uh, okay so here is the movement and the same uh, is done bounding box okay uh, points from volume grouping and deleting okay and same here you can link uh, particle separation with the p scale attribute to uh, automatically control your resolution and p scale so here we also have uh, movement which also could be a neat effect okay you could also actually um, uh, without for example if not using this method you could also create a box um, that have all the attributes like center uh, and um, the uh, bounding box uh, size linked to to your uh, to your box and then uh, modify uh, its, uh, its uh, point count and so on but I found this method uh, uh, more intuitive procedural and uh, um, convenient okay and so Another way, I mean, uh, if, I, if I'm doing a static movement, I um, first I 
I'm using, I'm converting my character uh, into pixels, okay, and then I'm copying it to the plug. If here I'm uh, doing it like, uh, if here I'm uh, doing for, uh, copying my animation and then converting it to pixels, and then I have this jittering. Uh, jittering points uh, but here I am first I'm copying all my pixels and then I'm adding animation this way I have having uh, static without any jittering okay and the last way uh, you could um, if your character is moving uh, you could uh, take the path of uh, of your moving character and convert it to, let's say, to create a geometry around it. Um, so here I'm using a sweep that creates uh, create a tube around the character. And I'm filling it with points. Uh, it may be a little bit um, uh, kind of a um, heavy in terms of uh, point count, uh, but um, in certain cases it might be might be um, might, might be the result actually that you are looking for. Okay, I mean the 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 solve of the problem. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> the rest is everything the same, filling with points, v scale attribute, uh, grouping or moving uh, character, and deleting and back to a copy. And we have the same jittering effect. Okay. So uh, this, uh, these are um, basic, uh, uh, basic principles of uh, making uh, pixel type effects, and let's uh, actually uh, see how um, we make a water type effect. Okay, pixel water, I should say. Splash. Okay, uh, so here's the model itself, and uh, um, some manipulations I'm doing first, and then uh, I'm creating a bound around it and transform it, making it larger. So if I um, Okay, so here's my bound, and this bound I will use uh, to identify my uh, my liquid setup. Okay, so this is the uh, flip container, and here I'm using actually here I'm using the model as an emitter. So, um, okay, and here I'm adding expressions on it at frame number one. I don't, I don't want uh, this uh, emit constantly, but only, um, only just to fill the model and use it at one frame, and then it will be uh, the activation will be uh, off. Okay, and here I am uh, using the same bounding box. So, uh, and I'm blasting the top of it, extruding. Uh, I'm adding a little bit more extrusion just uh, to uh, avoid uh, particle, uh, fluid particles just uh, going um, through the box of collision. Okay. And, uh, okay, there's, there's a collision. And I'm using the volume collide 
you can see this is my volume collision box okay and finally the simulation itself uh, here I'm also using uh, uh, frame number one at frame number one uh, let me actually check star frame number one should work yeah it's working okay what I have checked there um, uh, I, I, dis I disabled the narrow band and I uh, I turn up the show collision geometry and point as spheres uh, just to see as a, as a point. Um, here I choose the splashy method just to have more splashes. Okay. And the collision. Uh, I choose none, but I don't think it's actually has anything to do with the yeah. this is a new method of uh, uh, fluid setup uh, usually I uh, go with the uh, the old method uh, which I found more, uh, which I I got to use to it, so it, it it's um, more kind of uh, clear to me to use it. But um, I'm trying to learn this uh, as well. So uh, here's the simulation. Okay, here we have our simulation, and next time converting uh, my simulation into uh, VDP volume uh, here I'm using uh, here I'm using the same particle separation as in in the setup also which I linked to uh, flip container okay and so here I'm having my um, surface VDPs okay I'm converting it to bounding box and then particles it's quite dense and also uh, P scale okay which uh, I guess which I have linked for my my particle scale to my particle separation oh no uh, seems like that I'm using um, Wrangler um, no, I'm using the old uh, just a minute. Uh, six uh, and I'm using okay um, I'm I'm using a particle scale twice so I don't need this one I'm adding this afterwards okay so this is linked to uh, particle scale here the same uh, deleting the groups and I'm having those uh, by selecting uh, points by volume okay here is the particle scale and here I'm adding uh, up vector and uh, normals and here I'm transferring uh, all my uh, velocity and color attributes for uh, the visual uh, for the coloring particles and the motion blur and then I'm copying uh, my box to those particles and if you see uh, all the particles are uh, 
aligned um, in one direction. This is why I, I, I add this uh, normals. So if I turn this off, you see they uh, I think they they uh, mostly mo mostly like uh, using uh, velocity as a uh, as orientation. Okay. So uh, maybe you you you'd like to use the, this type of effect. I mean to keep them. Uh, looking this way but uh, I decided to to make it like a proper pixels okay and finally caching Okay, uh, let me do a little hundred frames. So as you see, uh, it's quite nice and uh, very neat effect in some in some cases, in some scenarios. Okay, and let's move to the next effect. Here we uh, we are using a virus simulation to uh, to transfer all the attributes uh, and make our pyre look uh, pixelated. Okay, so uh, here I'm having a sphere, a basic setup of uh, uh, pyro effect. So here is my pyro source. I'm using like density, temperature, burn, and fuel. Uh, here I'm uh, rasterizing all those effects. Okay, and linking uh, division size. Uh, to my pyro solver. In the pyro solver, uh, I'm converting uh, all of my volumes into a uh, VDB, and using a uh, six-pin floor, uh, I think it makes your simulation uh, lighter uh, uh, for for caching. Okay, so set up uh, only resolution. Uh, sourcing all those uh, used uh, applied effects okay here i'm changing the temperature but in the end uh, i was the higher temperature actually uh, allows you to um, allows to uh, pyro just move uh, uh, towards, I mean, uh, on y-axis uh, faster to um, um, but uh, but buoyancy actually is enough to uh, to control that um, uh, that type of uh, movement, okay to lift your pyro upwards uh, so here I'm using shape buoyancy um, a very basic setup I just needed uh, to see all those colors and um, some uh, basic uh, basic uh, setup okay um, here is my buoyancy uh, some turbulence just to uh, see them kind of a flames like uh, having a quite nice turbulence to it okay and then I 
change the look so I, when I, when I'm uh, going to transfer all those um, um, look of the pyro onto my uh, onto my points okay and then I have a cache so here's my simulation and next uh, what I'm doing I'm I'm deleting all the channels but density I'm keeping my density and I'm converting it to uh, VDB okay and the volume I'm converting to SDF and then I'm using the same method bounding box uh, okay um, p scale attribute then selecting volumes and uh, deleting what is not inside okay excluding my um, points uh. okay next one is I'm converting again but uh, here I'm keeping uh, all those uh, uh, VDBs and here I'm uh, converting it back to polygon and I'm using a, an attribute from volume and here uh, an attribute from volume I'm using a temperature um, field uh, and the attribute CD uh, I'm applying temperature to my CD attribute okay and this is a vector with tree uh, with the size of tree which is RGB okay then I'm going to uh, mapping uh, part of this and I'm tweaking uh, my um, coloring uh, values onto my um, geometry okay? yes onto my polygons and here I have uh, my polygons are colored with with the volume and the last thing I do I have here my points as well and I'm doing an attribute transfer and here are my points having all those coloring being accepted and then our pixels maybe if you're doing some lego type movie or um, a minecraft type, type of uh, animations you might um, you might use this type of effect okay and cache in the end so let's also try to preview this animation well as you see it's not very complicated uh, the main uh, thing is just to be able to set up and uh, use the, uh, those um, uh, scale attributes properly um, and um, yeah that's uh, what I wanted to say for today's lesson and uh, um, I hope the information was useful and um, thank you very much for your attention and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good luck. Goodbye.